Hello once again and welcome to Jiggy Math. So this time, we are going to talk about one of the essential things that you need to know, and that is how to write numbers in standard form. It sounds a very primary, but it is not. Okay, so there are different forms and representation of numbers, so one of which is decimal form. For example, 0 0.00045. Or you can also have a an ordinary number which is 25,647. So these two numbers are written in decimal form. The next one is index form. For example, 10 to the power of negative 3. So that is in index form or exponent form. Now what are the other ways to represent mathematical information? So you can also have insert form. You can also have in scientific notation. You can also have uh, in fraction form. So those are some of the forms or ways to write or represent numbers. So what is standard form and why do we need to, to, to write numbers in standard form? So uh, by definition, writing in standard form means writing a number in the form of a times 10 to the power of k, where a is between 1 and 10 inclusive, or including 1 and including 10. So a could be 1.2, 3.5, 4.6, but it cannot be uh, beyond 10. For example, 15.6, okay, so that cannot be. So a can only be between 1 and 10, including 1 and 10, definitely. And k is an integer, so, uh, so that's the meaning of standard form. So another uh, term for this is scientific notation. So some books use also the phrase scientific notation for standard form. Now why are we doing this? Because uh, definitely there are very small and very big numbers so it's more convenient to write this uh, very small and very big numbers in standard form. Um, talking about uh, small numbers or big numbers, so we can actually link this in chemistry. We have this what we call Avogadro's number. And this refers to the number of particles, molecules, ions, or atoms that are contained in one mole. So you can study this uh, in, in chemistry. Now you also have the order of magnitude in physics. You also have this microscopic measurements in biology. So those are very small numbers. And we also have the this astronomical distance, a unit for astronomical distance, which we, which we call a light year. All right. So, um, so they are connected to the different fields, to the different subjects. Okay, so in mathematics, we also have big numbers. So there are some big numbers that have special names. For example, Google. Google is equal to 10 to the power of 100. And then there's even a number that's bigger than this, okay, that has a special name. And that is Googleplex, which is equal to 10 to the power of Google. So imagine how big these numbers are. And Google sounds like Google, right? And do you know why? Because the owners of Google who are Larry Page and Sergey Brin. So there was one day wherein they were searching for the name of their uh, search engine. So you know if you're coming up with a website, you're looking for a name, a domain that is uh, available. And one of them mistyped Google as Google. And they found it available, so they use it eventually. And you know what? that uh, one of their headquarters, uh, they name it as Googleplex. Okay, so that's uh, a little trivia for you. So how do we write uh, from decimal to standard form? Okay, let's have this example. First one is 0 0.00000031. Okay, so this is a small number. So so you start from the original position of the decimal point and then you go uh, from left to right in such a way that you stop at something wherein it's going to be between 1 and 10. So imagine if we're going to stop here, it uh, it's going to be 8.31. So let's uh, move now the decimal point. So let's count 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so there are 8 places. So that means our uh, standard form is going to be 8.31 times 10 to the negative 8. All right. Definitely you can stop here, but that's going to be 83.1. And then 83.1 is not in between 1 and 10. So that is not in the standard form. Let's have uh, number 2. Okay, so this one is uh, a big number. Okay, so uh, for this one, the decimal is in here. Okay, so this time we're going to move from uh, left, from right to left. Okay from right to left and I think you're supposed to stop here 9.66 because that is again in between 1 and 10 you cannot stop here uh, and then come up with 96.6 it's not between 1 and 10 okay so let's count again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so you will now have a number in standard form which is 9.66 times 10 to the power of Eight. All right, so that's the way for us to write the uh, decimal number to standard form. Okay, now let's do it backwards. So this time, the given is standard form, and then you write it in decimal form. So 1.19 times 10 to the negative 6. So the power negative 6 is telling us that this is a small number. Okay, so all you need to do is, uh, from this decimal point now, you count six places to the left okay so this is uh this is going to be the decimal form so uh the given the decimal point is here in between one and one so you count six places to the left so that is one two three four five six now you have the decimal point now let's go to the next example 7.35 times 10 to the power of 8 so 8 is a positive power, so that means you will have a, uh, a big number, okay? So 7.35, this is your decimal point. This time you're going to move 8 places to the right, okay? So this is the decimal point. Let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this is our decimal representation of this standard form okay now let's move to the operations now let's begin with multiplication because this is more easy than addition and subtraction okay so let's have this example so you have two numbers in standard form how do we multiply them how do we multiply them so the first thing to do is you multiply the first numbers. The first numbers that we're talking to are 7.06 and 6.55. So let's multiply them as normal, as usual. Okay? And then what are we going to do with the powers of 10? 10 to the negative 5 and 10 to the negative 5. We just simply apply the laws of exponents uh, to the powers of 10. So 10 to the negative 5 times 10 to the negative 5. So we apply the product rule and we are going to have 10 to the power of negative 5 plus negative 5 and we're going to have 10 to the power of negative 10. The product of the first two numbers is 46.243. Now, if you take a look at this number, it is not yet or it is not in standard form. So the last step is you have to write the answer now in standard form. So for this to be standard form, this decimal point must... In, must be in between 4 and 6 all right so since you are moving to the right moving to the right so that means you are going to add 1 to 10 to the negative 10 so that means you will now have 4.6243 times 10 to the power of negative 9 again if you move to the right that is um, plus 1 to the index Okay, so it is like you multiply it by 10 to the power of 1. Okay, that is what we mean by you add 1 to the index. You multiply it to the 10 to the power of 1. So if you move 2 to the right, it means you are multiplying it to 10 to the power of 2 or 10 squared. Now, if you move to the left, 
if you move to the left, that means you are uh, multiplying it to 10 to the power of negative 1 if it's just one place. Okay, so let's move now to division. Division is, uh, again, we have two numbers, first one and the second one, both of them are in standard form. So what are we supposed to do? Divide the first numbers and then we apply the loss of index or the loss of exponents to the powers of 10. So since this is division, so we apply the quotient rule to the powers of 10. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then 10 to the negative 9 divided by 10 to the power of negative 3, and that's going to be 10 to the power of negative 9 minus negative 3, giving us 10 to the power of negative 6. Then all we need to do uh, to check is if the answer is in standard form and it is in fact in standard form because the first number four is in between one and ten so the answer is just the same to be four times ten to the power of negative six okay all right now let's go now to addition and subtraction so how do we add and subtraction two numbers that are in standard form so let's take a look at this example so what do we do we don't have any law of exponents in which the operation is addition or subtraction. So the um, best thing to do is we convert the numbers, each number uh, from standard form into decimal form and then we just do the usual addition or subtraction. Okay, uh, of course we are dealing with big or small numbers so addition and subtraction will be a little bit tricky there, all right? So 7.45 times 10 to the negative 7 is, uh, from standard form to decimal form is this. So be careful with the number of zeros. And then the other number is, uh, this is the decimal form of 2.55 times 10 to the negative 9. And then we're going to add these two decimal numbers and this is the answer and of course your answer must be in standard form all right so let's count so one two three four five six seven so the answer will be 7.4755 times 10 to the power of negative seven all right now just as uh just a reminder so calculator or computer notation is not acceptable. Definitely you can use calculator for, let's say for paper two or exam papers that uh, require you or that you have access to calculators. So you can do that. But the thing is in uh, the scientific calculators, in the graphic display calculator, if you're dealing with very big or small numbers, you might see in your display this kind of notation. This is referring to the exponent of 10. So let's say 5.2 times 10 to the power of 30. So do not write this as your answer. Okay, This is not acceptable. You will lose marks for doing this. So it should be 5.2 times 10 to the power of 30. So um, again, you can use calculator, but don't forget to write your answer in this form, which is the appropriate way to write it in standard 